Oof, I am out here at this gorgeous little creek within a coastal old growth forest during an absolute downpour. And it's pretty amazing checking out the way that these forests and these rivers have evolved to interact with one another. See, the complexity of all these different tree species at different spaces, at different ages, as well as the diverse plants in the understory, you know, the mosses and ferns on the forest floor, it all helps slow and regulate the flow of water as it makes its way down from the hillsides and into this creek below. And then within the stream channel, the complexities created by downed wood, these old growth logs and log jams cause the flow to arc and curve around these obstructions, forming pools, eddies, and a deep stream channel that slows the flow of water and retains it in the system for longer. But at high flows like this, the floodwaters expand out from the channel and laterally into the floodplain, filling in all these complexities created on the forest floor between big trees, down logs, and all the various pit and mound topography that's developed, which we can kind of see here. Now, this horizontal connectivity of the floodplain to the creek is really important for the survival of juvenile salmon and other critters here as those floodwaters spill out into the forest to create slower backwaters, eddies, and safe places for those fish to hide instead of getting swept out by the faster flows in the middle of the channel. And then once these floodwaters retreat, the water held in these floodplains will keep flows at higher levels during drought while helping everything to survive here, making the system more resilient to droughts, wildfire, and other climate change-driven impacts. But when forests are clear-cut logged, that complexity is reduced and rainwater flows fast down those hillsides and into the creeks, creating a much flashier system while also carrying a lot of sediments and gravel, which inundates the stream channel, smothering salmon reds and habitat for juveniles while causing it to flow faster and more streamlined with less complexity. Those young forests that regrow back here also lack the complexity and thus they don't hold moisture the same way, making them more prone to droughts, wildfire, and disease. Additionally, when we do things like develop in floodplains and build dikes or culverts and attempt to control the river, we lose that floodplain connectivity and all the benefits it provides, leading to a more uniform, faster flowing river that creates less complexity with widespread erosion and more prone to drought. So without healthy forests, we don't have healthy streams and creeks. And without that, we don't have salmon whose nutrients feed everything in this forest from the bears to the trees themselves. And these highly interconnected ecosystems can take thousands of years to reestablish after heavy modification. Therefore, it's imperative that we not only work to restore the ecological function of these watersheds that have been damaged over the past century, but we stop creating the problems in the first place by managing and stewarding these landscapes better in order to create a better future for ourselves and all those we share these lands and waters with.